Tammy here. I'm with Anthony Sewell from the Property Investment Store and we're here to have a bit of a chat about the changes in the NDIS SDA space. So um, Anthony, Property Investment Store has been heavily involved in the NDIS SDA space for the last five years. What does that look like for you and Property Investment Store? Uh, hi, Tammy. It's been an exciting roller coaster ride of wonderful uh, success stories, but also challenges. Um, it's a great space. You know, we love the space, but it's certainly challenging to work in with the NDIS and how they operate. Um, certainly uh, of late, um, in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of challenges around um, land, being able to source land, suitable land to build SDA homes on for our clients, uh, and also around uh, build costs increasing and land prices increasing. Those two things together um, have caused uh, the returns to not be as good on an NDIS package, and understandably, people have not been as interested in looking uh, at an NDIS SDA home anymore because the returns aren't as favourable as they used to be. So a bit of a change in that space as well. Back on the 1st of July, the NDIS came out with a new pricing structure. Now, that was a pretty thick document and was quite hard to decipher, but can you give me a bit of an overview as to the changes and what we're all waiting for is the increase in rents? Yeah, look, I guess um, there was a lot of discussion with the NDIS. We were part of an unofficial group that um, that uh, was selected to speak with uh, NDIS uh, parties in regards to pricing and just the challenges we were facing over the last few years. Um, and there was about 25 people in that group, uh, all different uh, providers from around Australia, and we were all seeing from the same hymn book, uh, basically saying that, you know, if you want to continue uh, having people look at purchasing NDIS and looking to build more NDIS SDA homes around Australia, um, you know, we need to look at the pricing. Um, there was a real disparity now in the pricing based on uh, these increases in land and build costs, um, and it was really problematic, uh, obviously, for new investors to look at it because the returns were so low. So they heard us. Um, the NDIS listened uh, and said, yes, all right, well, uh, we will uh, review the pricing. Uh, as of the 1st of July, they have come out with a lot of changes. Um, there's a lot of little parts to it, but in summary, mostly they have uh, improved quite substantially the funding in the SDA space, um, which is good news because that does bring the product now back in line to where it was uh, back in the early days of the product, about four or five years ago, uh, where returns could be up uh, over 10% uh, on, on a property, uh, rent returns, which is very exciting because obviously um, this space was something that investors were looking at to, to get a high return on investment and that just wasn't possible in the last few years. So, can, I, can I just interrupt? Yeah. What's the average return on a normal investment property, not an NDIS? What are we looking at? on a good rental? Look, you know, I, I suppose the, the, the number that people chase is sort of four and a half to five percent on average okay. normal everyday house investment property type structure they would purchase. Uh, in Sydney, you know, those numbers have been terrible for an average investment property have been two and a half to three percent return. So, um, you know, with the NDIS space to be looking at anything uh, up to and well over 10 percent, uh, it's, it's a pretty big return, you know, and it's pretty exciting for investors, especially uh, older investors who are looking to set themselves up with a nice um, solid income on the return on their investment. Uh, people, you know, who uh, may have a super fund have also looked at uh, purchasing an NDOS property in that uh, because it can obviously be very tax effective uh, in a super fund. Um, and just generally people looking to get a really good cash flow uh, on their investment. So yeah, anything over that sort of 10% mark as a return uh, for us now, again, is very exciting because it, it just opens up uh, a lot of options. And it also right now helps a lot of people uh, in the space where there's obviously a lot of interest rate increases going on and that is causing a lot of pain in a lot of people's lives. Uh, investing in property, 
is something that can be very um, great, a great option to do when the rates are low. Uh, but as rates start to creep up, um, when you've got a low return on a property like four and a half, five percent, uh, it's very quickly that that property can become negatively geared if if you've got an investment um, loan on that property and it's costing you a lot of money. Um, then every week out of your pocket to run that property. Therefore, Whereas, it's hard to, to hold for Yeah, very, very much so. Okay. I mean, the whole idea of owning property is that you, you make money out of it in the long term, but the only way to hold it for the long term is to have a good income source coming from that property to be able to hold it. So if you mm-hmm. don't have that, then it's very hard to hold. Okay, so what's the biggest thing do you think's come out of the new pricing structure? Um, I think generally there was a lot of disparity between the different levels. I mean, you've got four different levels of SDA uh, homes that you can effectively build. You've got uh, high physical support, robust, fully accessible and improved livability. Um, Improved livability especially uh, and fully accessible. Um, Those levels of homes were very much uh, underfunded and, you know, improved livability is for people with... Um, I guess, lower level, le- lower level disability needs and requirements. Um, and there wasn't a lot of focus on that. And yet there are quite a few clients that do need that level of housing. And it wasn't really being focused on being built because the numbers weren't that good on a return uh, point of view. And uh, fully accessible is for people who are wheelchair bound and, and um, have that sort of uh, level of disability. Um, that also wasn't quite up to, up to scratch. Um, I guess the good thing now is that you know, we can, uh, we're able now to build a house that we build mainly focusing on the robust space because that's the level where most people um, need uh, that level of uh, support. Um, but now we can, I suppose, have more uh, ability to get a tenant in a home because we can look at housing people who may have fully accessible or improvability needs as well. Uh, and the funding is not far off now what the robust funding has been in the past. So um, that's exciting because it just means that now, you know, any investor looking uh, to purchase in this sector has now got more uh, opportunity to, to find a tenant at different levels for very similar pricing. Uh, and that's very exciting because it, it just means there's there's more chance now to get that good return. Okay. Um, and what, what type of the, out of those four categories, what type is Property Investment Store uh, building and why? Because yes. I've seen, uh, sorry, I've just mentioned, I've seen great returns on the high physical support, which that sometimes has, we've got companies boasting 16 to 18%. So what do you build and why? Um, look, we, it's pretty simple. We, as I said before, we are a business that has the property investment side of the business. Uh, we also own the management side of the business. And I don't think that you can do, uh, you can work in this space properly without understanding the management side of the business. The management side of the business is what really guides us um, because, to be honest, if you don't build the right house in the right area, uh, you know, at the right level, then you're just not going to get a tenant. And uh, our management team certainly help us do that research to find out what we should be building, where we should be building it, and what level we should be building it at. If you look at the statistics, uh, you know, if you look at the numbers and the returns, yes, of course, you build high physical support all day long because long, it looks like it's the best one by far. But you can't think like that in this space. You've got to look at who the participants are and what do they need and where do they need it. And if you look at the statistics, it's around about 75% of all participants being approved for SDA funding on their care plans are uh, people who have a robust uh, requirement. So why would we be targeting then the other 25% of classes as being our main target. Uh, and if you were to break that up into three and say the 8% each, um, high physical support, would you have to say, well, that's 8% of people versus targeting 75% of uh, opportunity out there to get a tenant. Um, I'd be going to 75% every day because that's why you've got more chance to get a tenant. And that's why our management business, SDA Management Australia, uh, has a, over a 99% tenancy rate right now because we've been able to uh, build the right house, the right area at the right level uh, and our providers, care providers, um, they love our product uh, because it's not a hospital house, it's a beautiful house and we're getting tenants and we've got tenants in there and, you know, the, the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, so 
Okay, so it sounds like you really do need that hand in hand of being able to build the property, but also being able to manage it really is that key to having a successful portfolio. Yeah, it, it is really uh, not just about the build. Anyone can build a compliant home. Uh, you follow the rule book, you build a home, pretty easy. Uh, the problem is compliant normally means extremely ugly. It normally means it looks like a hospital uh, because they've stuck with compliant products and compliant materials and and you know we step outside the box with that. We're building a fully compliant home, but first and foremost, it looks like a beautiful home. You know, we've got, we had a tenant recently move into one of our homes. He's 56 years of age, and it was the first time in his life he's ever lived in a house. He has spent his entire life living in uh, institutions, hospitals, and even prison, because people, not because he's in jail, but because they've got to put him somewhere where he can be safe from others and, and also uh, be safe for himself. And there's nowhere to house some of these participants. And, you know, for him to be now living in a real house, uh, you know, is, is pretty mind-blowing at the age of 56 and, 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 you know, exciting for us that we're able to give these participants yeah. that opportunity. Okay, great. So it sounds like, you know, there has been some good positive changes with that pricing structure. And I know I can say we've seen a real uptick in the amount of clients coming through that are wanting to purchase NDIS where the numbers work. Look, thanks for giving us your input. Um, yeah, no problem. I mean, it's exciting, uh, you know, times back back to where we sort of were again in the start with the pricing, um, having that opportunity again to be able to show, uh, you know, our investors that, that there is some good news again. Uh, it has been a bit tough in the last couple of years, uh, but now it's exciting to be back in this space again and, and hopefully uh, be able to start helping some participants get into some more homes. Great. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Um, so, look, if you are looking at investing in the NDIS space and you want some more information, just click on the link below or in the email that we've sent you through contact property investment store and we can have one of our property strategists have a look at your unique situation and design the right strategy for you. Thanks for having. No problem. Thanks.